Hello everyone, I'm Larry, your instructor for financial accounting, and in this brief video I'd like to walk you through the process for making closing entries, and I'm going to show you two methods. They both work very similarly and end up with the same result, but one is slightly different than the other. We're going to show you both of these, and my hope is that this will help you with our project, our exercise in this course. So, in order to do closing, we first need to understand that we are only going to close what are called the temporary accounts. There are three types of accounts that we're going to be concerned with that are temporary accounts. Revenues, expenses, dividends. In our project that we're working in this class, we have one revenue account. It is called service revenue, but it's possible that a company may have multiple revenue accounts to close. Expenses, there will probably be many different expense accounts to close. Utilities expense, salaries expense, all of these different expense accounts need to be closed. They are temporary accounts. And finally, the dividends account. Revenues, expenses, dividends will all be closed. These are the temporary accounts. I want to make, out, make one final point about the revenue accounts, and that is there is one account that has the term revenue in it that is not a revenue account. Do you recall what that is? Unearned revenues. When you see unearned revenues, that is not a revenue account. That is a liability account that is on the balance sheet. So keep that in mind. We are closing revenue accounts, but not unearned revenues. That is a different type of account. Revenues, expenses, and dividends are what we are going to close. Any other accounts in your exercise are what are called permanent accounts. Cash, accounts receivable, land, buildings, accounts payable, notes payable, common stock, unearned revenues. All of those accounts are permanent accounts that appear on the balance sheet. They are not to be closed. We are only going to close revenues, expenses, and dividends. These are the temporary accounts. There are two approaches to doing closing. The first will show, the first approach, closes the revenue, expense, and dividend accounts directly to the retained earnings account. The second approach has just one extra step to it. In the second approach, you're going to see the revenues and expenses, the revenues and expenses will be closed to an account called income summary, and the, result, the resulting balance and income summary will in turn be closed to retained earnings. Dividends, just as before, will be closed directly to retained earnings. So you'll see in the second approach, there's an extra step for closing revenues and expenses to income summary, and then the income summary balance to retained earnings. But dividends, the same. Let's take a look at these examples. In this example, we're going to directly close to, do you see what that RE stands for? Retained earnings. We're going to close directly to retained earnings. And we have several accounts here. Service revenue, rent expense, salary expense, utility expense, and also dividends. And we've got the numbers included over a period. It looks like the service revenue was credited three times over this period for $8,000, $5,000, and $7,000 respectively. So what we've done is run the balance, and when we add that up, the resulting balance in our service revenue account is a credit balance for $20,000. It's very easy for us to see the balance in rent expense, salary expense, utility expense, and also dividends. It looks like they were only posted to once. Now, let's do our closing entry, all of our closing entries, for revenues, expenses, and dividends. This is the example where we are going to close everything directly to retained earnings. So we'll draw our T account here for retained earnings. And let's do the closing right on the T accounts. Then I'll show you what they would look like in the journal. So in this T account, we have a $20,000 credit balance in service revenue. How do we close that? We want to blow this account away to zero. If there's a $20,000 credit balance, we debit this account for $20,000. It is now wiped to zero. If we've debited an account for $20,000, what must we simultaneously do? Credit another account for 20000 
that's retained earnings. We will credit it for $20,000. We've debited the service revenue for its balance, credited that amount to retained earnings, and now service revenue has a zero balance in it. Similarly, with the expense accounts, we're going to close them to retained earnings. But notice they all have debit balances. How do we close each of those? We make a matching credit balance in each. Rent expense has a debit balance of $1,500. Credit it for $1,500. It's blown away to zero. It has wiped to a zero balance. There's a credit to, re to rent expense, so we debit that amount to retained earnings. Salary expense has $7,000 in a debit balance. We credit for $7,000 the salary expense to blow it away to zero, and we will debit retained earnings for that amount. Utility expense, $500 debit balance, let's close it. Credit that account for $500 to close it. Debit that amount to retained earnings. And there's one more account that we need to close. Dividends has a debit balance of $2,000. Credit that for $2,000. It's white to zero. And we will debit $2,000 on retained earnings. Now what can we do? Let's run the balance on our retained earnings. On the credit side, we have a $20,000 $20, entry. On the debit side, if we add these numbers up, it looks like they add to $11,000. So what do we have to do to get the final balance? Net these two sides. $20,000 on the right, $11,000 on the left. The result is a balance of $9,000 on the credit side, and that is the balance in our retained earnings account. What kind of an account is retained earnings? Is that temporary or permanent? It's a permanent account that you'll see on the balance sheet under equity. That's it. We've just completed the closing process, closing revenues, expenses, and dividends directly to the retained earnings account. This is in T account format. What would it look like in entries in a journal? Same thing. You're just looking at this in journal format. Every closing entry I just made a moment ago, you see right here in the journal. We debited the service revenue for $20,000, credited retained earnings. In this second grouping here, we credited all of the expense accounts for the amounts that were in the balances. And we debited the total. We did this in one shot. We took the total and debited all that to retained earnings. And then we closed the dividends account to retained earnings. You'll be doing this on your assignment. This here, the entries in the journal are no different from what we just did in the T accounts. Here is the closing process. Let's do the one other example using the second approach. In the first approach, we close directly to retained earnings. This second approach, revenues and expenses will first be closed to an interim account called income summary. Its balance will then be closed to retained earnings. Dividends, just as before, will be closed directly to retained earnings. Let's do it. Same numbers as before in our accounts for this example. But in this case, we're going to have two accounts with the closing here. I'll draw our first T account. This will be income summary. Next to it, this will be the retained earnings account. Let's do the closing. How do we close service revenue? $20,000 credit balance. We debit that for $20,000 to wipe it to zero. Where do we credit this to? Income summary. That's our halfway point. What about the three expense accounts? We're going to credit each of them for their balance to wipe them to zero, and we will debit all of that to income summary. Rent expense has $1,500 on the left side, so we will credit them on the right side. And at the same time, debit the income summary. Salary expense, close that $7,000 to wipe it to zero, debit it to income summary. Utilities expense has a debit account, a balance of $500. Let's credit for $500 to wipe that to zero, that balance and we will debit the 500 to income summary. Now we can figure out in the income summary its balance. We have 20,000 on the right side. On the left side, it looks like we have $1,500. 
$9,000 totaled. So we net the two, $20,000 on the right, $9,000 on the left. We have an $11,000 balance on the credit side on the income summary. What do we do that? Well, what do we do with this? Close it. $11,000 on the left side. We will debit that $11,000 on the right side to close it to zero. And if we've debited there, we credit that over to retained earnings. There's one other thing we need to close. Remember the dividends account? That will be credited and closed directly over to retained earnings. Let's now take the balance in retained earnings. 11000 on the right, 2000 on the left. A $9,000 balance now exists on the credit side in retained earnings. And that's the same result as we did before. If you want to see these entries in the form of closing entries in a journal, here's all the same entries. Closing service revenue to income summary. The three expenses closed to income summary. Then the difference between those two in income summary, the $11,000, is debited to income summary, credited to retained earnings. Dividends is then closed directly to retained earnings. I realize this went very quickly, folks, but you're able to stop, start, and go back through this. This is also shown exactly in the same way in your financial accounting book and also in our online lecture materials. Good luck, and I hope that helps with your closing entries.